Hey, welcome to the Maine Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Jeff Matea of the Matea Group at Keller Williams Realty. To my left here, Harrison Smith. Welcome, Harrison. How you doing, Jeff? Good. Always great to be in studio and pick your brain and, and learn about uh, what's going on in the Maine real estate world and you know the national news, how it impacts the local. We know that real estate's hyper local, so we tend to you know try to avoid the national news, but national news obviously has a tendency to affect how people are thinking and feeling and you know, just that consumer confidence. We, we talked inflation, we've talked interest rates. It's kind of that broken record. Uh, inventory now uh, is, is a, you know, another one. And then we had a great insurance yep. uh, uh, talk last week with Jeff Lee of the Farmers Insurance uh, right in South Portland. Yeah. And I think what was cool talking to, to Jeff Lee is, you know, back to your point about, you know, national news, you know, yeah. we're very isolated here in Maine, but sure. really, you know, what's happening on the national scene does come to Maine. Um, you know, we're seeing insurance rates climb. A lot of it's caused by things that are happening outside of Maine. In some cases, not even in New England. Right. Um, when you look at hurricane damage and things like that, you know, we've had we've had wildfires, we've had hurricanes, we've had all kinds of stuff the last few years. You know, Mainers are feeling the effect of that. What's nice is the fact that a, a company like Farmers, and Jeff elaborated on this last week, was, you know, they've got some really great programs, really great coverage, really great yeah. rates um, because they're looking national like everybody else, but they're a little bit larger and they can manage that better than maybe some of these other insurance companies that are taking 20, 30% increases. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, a further reminder too, is just, you know, continue to just inspect what you expect. Yep. Is your, is your insurance, you know, are you at least insured to where you should be? We find a lot of people are underinsured, especially with inflation and just, you know, labor causing, you know, things that cost more. And, you know, so they have that guaranteed replacement. Um, you know, the guaranteed rebuild. So we want to make sure that people are fully insured most importantly, but it doesn't hurt every couple of years to shop just to make sure that your premiums, what you pay is what you should be getting. And that coverage, you know, he's saying that he's been very competitive when people are getting options and requoting. Yeah. Um, he's, he's earning a lot of business. So interesting to hear that when, you know, insurance rates are rising, mm -hmm. they already had predicted that and knew to be ahead of the game. Um, but that because they're, portfolio is so spread across the country. They're very competitive having just entered the main market a year ago. Yeah, exactly. You're coming up on that one year anniversary and, you know, and I can honestly say I was guilty of being underinsured and I should have known better. I'm in this, <laughs> I'm in this space every day talking yeah. about inflation and prices. And, you know, I knew that everything had gone up in value and, um, and also construction costs have been way up. And, and I was yeah. guilty of kind of not paying attention to that for a little while. And, I'm glad I did talk to Jeff, found out that I was underinsured, got that fixed. And I mean, it's not something you look at, right? I mean, a lot of no. insurance companies, they just add that cost of living adjustment and you just kind of say, exactly. well, it gets paid. It's escrowed into my mortgage. Who, who the heck cares? Like it's one less thing to have to worry about. We're busy people. Exactly. We want that instant. So it really just comes up at renewal or if you get a call. So if your insurance company is not reaching out to you, that might be a sign, you know, if it's been a number of years that you should reach out or at least, you know, go and check out. Jeff, Jeff Lee at Farmers Insurance. Yeah, absolutely. It's, or your insurance company, at least put them on their heels and see, you know, if they can sharpen their pencil and also make sure that you're fully insured. We don't yeah. want anybody underinsured and this have a loss. A, this is a good time to check in on that because we have seen the worst of the inflation in the last couple of years. Um, and I, I know a lot of us feel like, you know, insurance is that thing we pay for that we really hope we'll never use. Yeah. But you want to know if you go to use it. That it's going to that work. you have it, yeah, and it's going to give you what you need. Yeah, it's that one of those things you you wish you had it. If, uh, if there's a problem, you have to make a claim. And I know realtors take take a lot of heat. We always get that, you know, just daylight savings. We uh, just moved our clocks forward. You know, reminder to do, you know, change your smoke alarm batteries, etc., okay. or turn your clocks forward. And realtors always got heat because they were the ones that made that message out there. We would rather take the heat to re-remind you yeah. to check your homeowner's insurance, your car insurance, you know, all those bundled policies. Right. You might be driving around underinsured vehicle even. Yeah. And it's not just homes. No, anything's yeah. possible. Um, so just to make sure that you you have that coverage. So other news in the media as our fun times with, uh, I guess we'll keep the banks nameless for now, but uh, yeah. you know uh, some failures uh, in some banks that, you know, went belly up. Yeah. Yes. And it's, it's interesting because I, I think, you know, everybody's got this panic about, you know, the banking system and Will they lose all their money? But in, yeah. in reality, you know, <clears throat> when you look at the this the one particular bank that started it all, they were holding significant deposits for sure. tech startup companies that were sitting on a lot of investor raised capital that was funding their operations. You know, the average the average person in this country is really not at risk of a bank failure because mm -hmm. FDIC insurance is up to two hundred fifty thousand. Yep. Uh, so the average person is not going to be affected by a bank failure if it were to happen. Right. I think what was interesting here is that you had a lot of companies that were sweating out if they'd have if they have the money, because then of course they've got to make payroll and keep the company running. So I think that was the risk there. But 
um, the government stepped in with the bank with the bank funding that they have. Um, all these banks contribute to to Correct. back the deposits. Right. So I think we're I think the tide has been stemmed for now, but it has definitely pointed out some kinks in the armor of the banking industry. Yeah, and I mean it's put a magnifying glass on that industry. Um, sadly, when you know we're worried about inflation and other things that are happening, so you know it almost makes you wonder. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but <laughs> at the same time, I mean our media does a wonderful job of alarming people right. and sensationalizing every piece of news that they can, because their job is to get eyes and ears watching and listening yep. and you know who wins that game is who's first to report and who's to uncover and who's to you know get that smoking gun mm -hmm. um so it does annoy me a little bit at the same time you know we've already been through so much of this and there's regulations how the heck does this happen right and there's so many smart people that are on these board of directors and they're you know banking regulations that fdic is monitoring i don't understand that how some reporting didn't happen that you could get away with this for such a long period of time and then all of a sudden kaboom um However, I get interest rates rising, change some ratios of this. I mean, it's still like they'd have, they were very highly leveraged and not capitalized enough so that right when people made a run, oh crap. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that a lot of us, I think we, I think we understand the bank isn't holding every dollar they say they've got, you know, no, right. it's a fractionalized banking system. Yep. They're only holding a portion of what they have on deposit because everything else is either invested to create interest income or it's right. for loans, car loans, home loans, exactly. whatever. Yep. Um, so they're not sitting on all that cash. No. The, the problem you have is when you have a bank, you know, when you have these banks that had, that had large clients that were trying to pull out significant amounts of money. And then there were some concerns about their ability to do that. And other customers came and did the same thing, that that bank run concept. Yeah. No bank on the planet can honor all the deposits if everybody shows up at the front door asking for their money. Exactly. And that was really what happened here. It was almost like a contagion of people going, well, I need all my money. Well, I need mine. I need mine. I need mine. And all the way down the line to the point where the bank had to just kind of raise the flag and say, we can't we can't redeem all this. We just don't have it. Yeah. And that process is not is not simple. And if you've ever been to the bank to withdraw you know, cash for a, to, go, to go buy a car or to put it on a sizable down payment on a home, you know that that's not like a walk in today and get it right now. Like you've got yeah, to there's call a them process. ahead of time and yeah. request that because oftentimes right. they just don't have the cash on hand to do it. Yeah. And then the authority level to have a sign off. Right. So it's you know, typically a higher up that can uh, authorize that. Uh, it just, it just makes you wonder, um, you know, again, not getting to the conspiracy, but what else is coming or is there something that we don't know that, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, board of directors is very, highly sophisticated, intelligent folks. I just makes you wonder specifically with the, the Silicon Valley, uh, mm -hmm. that just investing into these. So they were, you know, money's on account, money's out invested into things and just a little, got a little too aggressive in their investments and their, you know, their portfolio that they held, that they didn't look back on that. Um, and a kind of gambling that, um, might get away with us. And then, Oh, interest rates start to creep up, but interest rates were climbing already. So why it got to like, the bubble burst. Um, but rest assured, a lot of your local community banks, um, many of them in Maine are very, uh, capitalized and, very and, and, you know, sitting there very conservative as well. I mean, I think it's just the main way. Um, it is. but also, right. This is, this is super regulated. It is. The FDIC very. looks at the books often. Um, so it, and it just, again, it makes me wonder. So, yeah, you know, I'd be interested to see what happens. Yeah. There's lots of stress tests they do. There's lots of things they do to try to catch this. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, obviously as the story comes out, we'll learn about what's happened because there were sure. reports that like the executive paid bonuses the day before the FDIC took it over and that yeah. they were aggressively investing to hit bonus targets. And there, maybe sure. there's some foul play here, but I'm sure it, it, yeah. it takes a lot to get to this point, a lot of bad decisions and a lot of bad circumstances that yeah. leads to a situation like this. Well, and then a, uh, and then a certain um, talking head was on uh, CNBC, <laughs> I guess, uh, touting that this was a great stock to buy uh, not too long ago too. So yep. it should be interesting to see, you know, how does that trickle down to the who's who that um, was a part of this. So yeah, just like when yeah. FTX blew up and you had all those celebrities that were sure. caught in the middle of that, you know, sometimes things like this happen. Yeah. Right. You right, just right, hope right. there's no foul play and, Everybody picks up the pieces. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so, you know, moving on uh, back to real estate, <laughs> although banking does have a, yeah, a role to play, um, is interest rates. So we saw inflation and job reports come out uh, March 14th. So CPI is down, inflation, you know, a little lower. Heading the right direction. We, yeah, where we want it to be headed. Yeah. Um, maybe not as uh, aggressive. You know, the Fed still be interested to see what they do. Um, but that jobs report. Tell yeah. us more. I mean, yeah. So the jobless claims came in a little bit higher. And, yeah. uh, and I, I think that over the last, I mean, there's been lots of videos circulating showing um, Jerome Powell, who's, who runs the Fed, 
you know, being kind of beaten up by Congress that he's trying, he's on like an anti-jobs crusade to try mm-hmm. to stem inflation. And, and in reality, he's, he's not on anti-jobs crusade. You do yeah. need, I mean, unemployment is at like the lowest level it's been in like seven yeah, years. Three and a half percent. Like yeah. 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 It's an insanely low rate. But mm-hmm. the reality of it is there are so many open jobs, like these jobless claims are temporary. People are, one company is going to lay off and another company is going to hire. Like exactly. we're yeah. we're going to, we're going to maintain super high employment. We're going to maintain, um, you know, strong consumer spending, strong, hopefully we'll see consumer savings come back. But in reality, the, the economy needs to take a little bit of a breath so we can get inflation stemmed because you've got inflation on all sides, you know, supply chains are, it's cost more to produce a product. So I got to sell it for more consumers are spending more. It's a it's this long cycle that creates all this activity, right. but at least things are heading the right direction. It's not looking like there's going to be some massive wide scale recession. They do need the economy to step back and slow down, right. um, but it doesn't look like what they're doing is going to drive is going to grind it to a halt and change everything that's going. Sure, on. yeah, and it's nice to see locally. Anyway, um, mm-hmm. we talked to some folks in the Midwest that maybe inventory hasn't uh, crept up or they're they're a little bit more healthier. Ours is very light still, so we're seeing you know listed a home yesterday and it already has uh, twelve to fifteen showings. Last I checked, under twenty four hours. So that many people looking at a home mm-hmm. in that price point in that town, I get it now that that price, you know, it's, it's, they're shopping on a a price point or a range, but now looking across multiple towns because they can't find one in the specific town that they dream of being in or would be most convenient for them. So they're maybe sacrificing a little bit to move a little bit further out of that band and that circle. It's just, you know, it's astounding to know, you know, once you were happy, you know, four or five years ago to get 10 showings in two weeks, now it's, you know, might have 10 showings in, 12 hours yep. uh, or less, you know, we've seen ones where, you know, we held the showings to a, a, a time frame, and people were having hundred showings over the weekend. It was yeah, like exactly. a revolving door. You're, you're pulling line of people, you're pulling up and someone's already in the house, they're <laughs> leaving. And then as you're about to walk in, someone else is driving in and you're like, geez, uh, you know, who, how, who's locking up, or I guess yeah. we'll leave the lights on and just go, go, go. I um, you're getting maybe 10, 15 minutes inside a home yeah. before you have to make a decision. And so you're going there with that urgency again back to the market's exactly. creating the urgency you have your pre-approval you're prepared you're working with a great agent i've got to decide you know honey we if we like this house we better right be ready we head to dunkin donuts or back to the agent's office to write this offer right um and then there's maybe offer deadlines what if another house comes on the market and i just put an offer on this i want to hear about that one before i engage in this one um so there's a lot of you know, things to think about, but also a reason to work with a team exactly. that can get you into a property. And we've got some great stories and we'll, we do. We'll dig into that. Exactly. And, and we, we did a state of the market show here a couple weeks ago. You can yeah. find that on YouTube, find some clips on our Facebook, uh, where we we dove into kind of the market for buyers, sellers, what interest rates look like, what some predictions look like. We'll do that periodically to help people stay in tune with what's going on. Cause I do think, I think the media is painting a picture that, that the, you know, the housing market's in trouble. And what we're saying yeah. is it's, it's not. The, you know, it's the healthy. only the only restriction we've got right now is inventory. If there were more homes available, more people would be able to get into a home. And I think one trend that we talked about last year that we're not seeing, there was an expectation that some of the people that maybe came here during COVID to get out of the cities um, and get a change of pace. We thought there'd be a point in time where some of them would start to go back to where they had come from, whether it's yeah. Boston or New York or Hartford or wherever they might have come from. Sure. We're really not seeing that. We're not seeing that migration <clears throat> back out. A lot of those people have come here. Very little. They love the quality of life yeah. they're staying. And we're still seeing out-of-staters continue to come in. You know, there's always going to be that band of, you know, the the bell curve. There's exactly. going to be the ones that they're, they're all in, yep. maybe some in the middle of the road. And I heard a couple of stories and, and connected with some agents who told me or I connected with some, um, you know, consumers that said, yeah, we moved here from New York and uh, we loved the main way of life, how it was a little yeah. relaxed, but I'm so used to the busyness of right. Manhattan. So they did keep their home and rent it and did go back. Others are like, no, nah, man, this is this is sweet. I mean, it's like I can sleep well at night. I don't hear like cars and, you know, ambulances and police cars and fire trucks and, you know, just the the, the, the city life sounds. Yeah, I don't have a hundred um, neighbors. In I definitely building. don't miss that anymore, you know, yeah. or like having to worry about like, you know, who's behind me or like over my shoulder at an ATM or just walking on the street. Um, we've got a way of life that people have appreciated from just coming here on vacation to relax yeah. and then enjoying that in the off season when it's even quieter. Exactly. Um, a lot of people can take that and it's, you know, it's not that, that crazy and employers love it because yeah. you know, their, their people are still showing up and they're being, they're able to just, you know, zoom into uh, meetings, take calls from home, work remotely uh, has been fantastic uh you know we see that um 
uh, Fidium uh, is installing fiber cable uh, up and down Route One and, and all over uh, Southern Maine. So that's helping, you know. So you get you know faster speed internet, and uh, you know we're, we're seeing people you know really gravitate towards um, Southern Maine and continuing to stay. Yeah, and and this migration has certainly helped in terms of drawing in employers. Like you know we've got the Downs announced months ago that Costco is yeah. coming. Costco sure. wouldn't have come to Maine a few years ago because there wasn't enough people or traffic. Right. Or now at the point where we're on their radar, same with Whole Foods. They wouldn't sure. have come here 10 years ago, but they came here in the last, in the last wave because mm -hmm. it makes sense for them. The other piece of that too, though, is that as these people have relocated from the other, from, from these cities, in some cases they're bringing their businesses with them. So yeah. that's created also really tight inventory conditions on the commercial side. Right. Where if you're looking for, Retail space, office space, production space, <laughs> um, especially anything that is on the industrial side, warehousing, manufacturing, yeah. distribution. There's little to nothing available on that side because it, there's a there's a substantial demand for the commercial business. A lot of that's been caused by either growth within the state or people that have come here and they're trying to bring their business with them. It's, it's funny you mentioned that. So I, actually, just before the show, I was driving up and down Route One, yeah. Biddeford, Arundel, Kennebunk. Where the heck is the space? You know, yeah. even going into yeah. some you know, businesses just to say, you know. I assume you like it here. Who do you know that, uh, cause I've got friends looking for space. Who do you know that might not be advertising that they have? So again, it's like door knocking and sending out, you know, letters trying to surface who will raise their hand that may be relocating or doesn't need as big of a space. Cause there's folks that are still looking to grab opportunity commercially. Yeah. Big time. A lot of urgency. And I've, we've got, um, we got three, three tenants right now. We just put under letter of intent in various areas, um, but a lot of sense of urgency of if they can get a proposal that makes sense, they want to sign that That's letter right. of intent, get right to a lease or even go under contract if they're buying it. And there's definitely a couple more coming. So as soon as we can find that, we've got another another tenant in place. Yeah, um, so shifting gears, um, I, I mean, I was just uh, floored with the opportunity to uh, be recognized mm -hmm. by U.S. News and World Reports. We'd always known that they were the ones that uh, recognized colleges and universities, yeah, right. you know, best place to, you know, go for liberal arts or business or, you know, uh, best, um, you know, bang for your buck, you yeah. know, you know, lower cost, but great education and vice versa, you know, costs a lot of money, but you get what your diploma is worth a ton. Mm -hmm. um, so they recognized us, the Matea Group at Keller Williams Realty as the number one company in Maine to do real estate business with. Um, and that was announced. They gave a top 10. Unbelievable to see that we are number one. And uh, it's funny how that story uh, came about. I, I didn't even know that we were in the mention. I saw, you know, someone had posted on their social media that they were in the top 10. I, I don't even remember who it was. And uh, I looked and I was like, wow, that's, you know, that's an honor. U.S. News and World Report, uh, heard of them. And uh, so I Googled it. And kind of just ran all those channels and then found their, them. And then like, well, what's the top 10? And then, wow. Yeah. The Matea Group, Keller Williams Realty, number one. Yeah, uh, that's it. awesome. Uh, yeah. Hadn't even, you know, it came out March 9th. So it was like a Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. We were just busy on appointments or yeah. something. And uh, so I found it over the weekend and let the team know. And then we posted and, uh, you know, the calls and the emails and the congratulations and clients saying, you know, want to work with you or want to refer business. Um, it's just been astounding. Um it's, you know, we're, we, we love what we do, uh, and it shows, and, um, it's great to be recognized by a, a national outfit. Um, so it's been, you know, good to get the press and, uh, be recognized for everything that everybody does from sales team to the operations administrative, um, you know, right down to, you know, everybody, it's a team effort. Yeah. And I love the, the part of the, the story I love the most is, you know, we didn't realize that award had been that recognition had been given because <laughs> we were just we were too busy we were too busy working with clients on appointments yeah, yeah, doing yeah, that thing. It was a big surprise, and uh, I, I think it's it, it's kind of a, a credit to the team and a credit to you as to why the group was recognized. It's because that's just what we do. We come in every day. We do what we have to do. We serve clients at a high level, and we're not looking for the accolades and awards. Yeah, the accolades They're great. are fun and, and it's exciting and it's good to you know pat yourself on the back or like you know recognize that it's because of each of these clients trusting in us to work right. to help buy, sell, invest in real estate that these surface. Um, except it's not something that we're you know we're out to be like oh let's let's get the U.S. News and World Report's number one <laughs> ranking. Um, you know, I didn't even know it existed. Um, Sure, there are others and real trends and others that that do those rankings. And you know, I guess it's how you're measured. Um, you know, you want to see what you're doing in comparison to others. At the same time, we've decided, like we we look at the Michael Phelps um, as the analogy. The Michael Phelps photo um, going against, um, I think it was the Brazilian, and he's just straight ahead, and the Brazilian's like looking over, right. and kind of the focus is right. Well, silver medal or bronze because you're so focused on what someone else is doing. Michael Phelps was just 
I want to win the race and do the best that I can yep. and get there. So it, it is what it is. It's fantastic. It, you know, we want to recognize the team and us, you know, my, me personally, I want to make sure that people are recognized for all that they do. Um, because there's a lot more than just buying and selling real estate. It's doing stuff, for what's right for people and exactly. connecting them with, with folks. So I think our biggest thing, and, and you were going to talk a little bit about this is the connectivity. So yep. that was the, that was the, you know, the, the underlying piece in that U S news and world reports was right. They do a lot of business yet. What we want to recognize them for is how they connect you. So you buy, sell, invest in real estate. It's been a great experience. And we're hearing that from the consumers is because the lender, the title company insurance, they have all of the uh, third party vendors that can do the plumbing, heating, electrical roof, uh, pl plow your driveway, hot top your driveway, everything. I mean, we've even been called to ask like, who's, who do you recommend for childcare? And we're new to the area. Um, we've got someone in pre-K and then we understand that that's only in this town. There's only two days a week that it's offered. Well, who's going to, you know, does your client have a recommendation for it? Do you have a recommendation for who can watch our children the other days of the week? So we got to work. Right. Um, so it's, you know, we do everything it seems, or we're connecting yeah. to everything. Yeah. Well, and I, and I laugh and I think about a situation just a couple weeks ago where there's a listing coming on the market and it needed a little bit of prep to get ready. And yeah. you were, you were in there patching and painting a wall, I think, to That's make right. sure that it was yeah. show ready. And, yeah. uh, you know, I think there's a, there's a level of, there's a level of client experience and client support and care that we, that we provide that I think is not necessarily ordinary. Sure. Uh, I think there's many times we go above and beyond because ultimately, you know, going back to the kind of the core Kelly Williams culture and also our own culture, it's, yeah. you know, we're looking to build win-win situations. We're trying to get people, you know, we're trying to, it, this is success through others. It's, if we help people get to where they need to get to, then ultimately yeah. that's where we get the accolades and awards. So for us, it's really about, you know, what does that client need? You know, what does the agent need if they're on our team? Uh, and how do we get them to where they need to go? Sure. And what, what steps can we take to make that process easier? A little bit less stress, a little bit less stressful. Yeah. Um, so they get the outcome they want. Yeah. The best experience and smooth. And, you exactly. know, I've taken a lot of crap over the years for like, well, you know, you do high volume and it's all about units. And that's the tough part is a lot of these, a lot of these other entities, U.S. News and World Reports actually didn't even mention how many units you sold, how much volume you did, how much money you earned. It was why you do it and the exactly. reason. So some of these other entities that come out with reports and where, where we're ranked and I, God knows who cares. But we would get that grief and maybe a competitor would say, well, yeah, yeah, you know, they, they sell a lot of homes, but I'm, I, I care more for my clients or, you know, some BS like that. What we don't put out there enough is our story. You know, you hear our radio ads and some of our TV stuff that say, right, you know, uh, John and Mary needed to sell their home. They called the Matea Group, sold it in four days, $50,000 over asking, and they were happy to be able to move to South Carolina. What doesn't get um, mentioned is, right, sweeping up dog hair, moving boxes so that photos can be taken. Um, you know, clients who might have also just said, like, here's the key and, you know, tell me when it sells. Yep. And you go in and like, oh my God, there's light bulbs that aren't, you know, don't work. And, uh, you know, that couch doesn't go there. So we move that, or they've got so much junk that we're bringing some stuff into the basement or holding a yard sale or throwing stuff on Facebook marketplace or moving it into their garage or calling the dump guy. Um, we've all, you know, everybody knows the dump guy it is just getting that going that then you don't, you know, it just feels really weird to then go and put on Facebook, like, or a radio ad. Oh yeah. Jeff and Harrison, you know, they, they people called the Matea group and, you know, they cleaned out your basement for you. And, you know, for, you know, blah, 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 got it sold in four days for $20,000 over asking after they patched a hole and painted the wall and, you know, sw sweeped up dog hair and uncovered your pool um, and put chemicals in it so that we could get a nice photo for the pictures and, yeah. um, you know, on and on Did and on. the dishes that were in the sink. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or threw them into the, to, into the <laughs> oven so that you didn't see them in the photos. Um, and then reminded you wrote a little nice personal yeah. note. So you're, when you went to turn on the oven, you didn't, you know, burn the place down. Um, but yeah, it just, it's great to get that. And I think people don't even cobrokes in the market have a perception of, well, you just, you just do a lot of business, right? How do you, how do you do it? And, and, you know, if we're not telling our story, someone else is, exactly. and that's, that's what I've always been coached on is, you know, you got to be careful with that. Is like, how do you tell your story? Who do you tell your story? Who's listening to your story? What's the audience? And, you know, the biggest thing that I would share is when I would go on appointments on listings and even buyers, but most important with listings is we always explained the doctor's office or the dentist. We'd always yeah. say, right. You know, everybody's been to the dentist or the doctor. 
And so I'd say, you know, Harrison and you being the seller, um, you know, you've been to the dentist, obviously. Right. Do you, you remember like when you go in, you introduce yourself to the receptionist and you say, right, Harrison, I'm I'm here for my 11 o'clock. And they say, yep, great. Well, meanwhile, they're answering phones. They're inputting, you know, insurance stuff. They're, you know, giving the the next card to your next six months to the next person, you know, the next patient that leaves. And then you too, um, taking that copay or giving you your toothbrush or whatever. And then, you know, someone comes out like a hygienist comes out and, and they bring you in. And they're asking questions too, like, you know, have you, you know, taken any medications? Are you allergic to anything? Do you have um, any pain? You know, how, how's your, how are your teeth since I last saw you? Or, you know, you got to get you updated for x-rays or whatever. And then they clean your teeth and they do that. So they specialize in that while the receptionist specializes in the greeting people, making them feel comfortable, welcomed to the office. And then the, the lead dentist, you know, the actual doctor, the DMD, um, comes in and does the checkup, but based on the hygienist has taken notes, exactly. looked at your gums, you know, done the, 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 the checkup and maybe has some key areas or targets or notices something on an x-ray and mentions it to the head of the office. And then they check you in. So similar to that reception nurse doctor mm-hmm. concept. So, you know, the dentist has many, many more years of experience. They don't necessarily aren't, they can't spend a half hour to 45 minutes to an hour with every patient. Yet you still get that same level of care because the lead dentist is coaching the hygienists who are then, you know, in this world and hearing, well, that hygienist had that experience today or two hours ago to, you know, last Friday, this one. And so they all have office meetings to talk about, you know, key areas to look at, or we just learned this at a dental conference or whatever. Um, So how to correlate that to real estate is it? they call me the rainmaker, right? I'm, I'm the one that make it rain to, 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 to share leads, to attract business such that people want to buy, sell, invest in real estate with our team. And then from there, right, I coach and train um, with the help of others, agents to have that, that same level, you know, y- you know, they're newer yet. They are having that experience between you know, 325 sales last year. So they're overhearing experiences, ex- examples of this went here and, you know, keeping it confidential as to terms and stuff in the market, as well as like people's situations, you know, that's not discussed, but how to get them through their process right. so that they're learning about, you know, if they did 25 transactions, they still learn of 300 others so that they can help service their clients at a higher level than an agent that's on their own doing eight to 10 deals. Well, in 10 years, if you do eight to 10 deals, you do 80 to hundred. Well, it's going to take you 30 years to have the experience of listening about the 325 exactly. transactions. So we want to help people understand that. And then behind the scenes, right? Administrative operations folks are specialized in the paperwork and the processing. You don't want me doing all the paperwork. No. I can help get it signed. I can help walk you through Absolutely. and explain what it means and make you feel comfortable because I'm confident in what it says. And I've done this 300 and sometimes this year and 1500 to 1800 times in the last 10 years or whatever it is. Um, see, I don't even know how many homes we've sold. <laughs> um, yet the, the consumer then feels that confidence. Right. And then when people are say, okay, I get the doctor's office, like, you know, and I had someone that was a doctor's like, well, yeah, like it doesn't always happen that way. And there's <laughs> like, I get it. I get it. But right. Go to Starbucks. You can have that similar experience. It's uniform. Yep. The 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 shop is clean. You go and order here. You wait and you pick up your coffee or whatever here, and you go sit over there and go through the drive through, and it's the same. Like you can get the same cup of coffee in Seattle that you can get in Scarborough, Maine. Right. Might pay a little bit different of a price. Wages are different, supplies different, et cetera. However, that experience that people come back for, but they're not having the CEO of Starbucks deliver you your coffee right. because that same, they're, they've hired people that have the same vision, values, beliefs that Starbucks puts out there as their mission, vision, values, beliefs, uh, and perspectives. So that's what we're looking for. And that's what we want the consumer to experience. And as long as we have people that right deliver on what we exemplify, the consumer gets that experience and it's smooth and, and they tell their, their friends, their neighbors, their coworkers and people return. And so we have a huge retention in uh, clients that have worked with us that come back and clients that have worked with us that then tell others right. who then 
you know, sphere referrals uh, are a huge part of our business. Uh, you know, more than 70% um, are related to people who we've done business with in the past have recommended us yeah. uh, to be realtor for their friends, family, coworkers, neighbors. Yeah. And even more so than like the U.S. News and World Report right. accolades, you know, a referral is really the best the best sign that we did a really good job is when somebody right. goes and tells their friends and family about about the team and working with them. Because I think the important part to point out in this is that it's the Matea group. Mm -hmm. sure. It's not just Jeff Matea. No. There's a, there's a whole team, there's, there's agents, yeah. there's support staff, there's administrative staff, and we've hired people that are experts in those various areas because ultimately the consumer gets a better experience when you're focused on getting their house sold. Sure. The, the admin staff is focused on the paperwork and the process and lining up all the dominoes. Uh, and that's when the, that's when the client really wins. You know, they're not hiring you to fill out the paperwork and, and schedule the inspection. They're hiring you to help them, help them navigate the process of selling the home. You know, you advise and guide, that's and, you right. know, they decide. Yep. And they want you focused on that, not focused on which piece of paper needs to be signed <laughs> where and when and how. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, they want you focused on on getting the property onto the, onto the market, getting it in front of as many people as you can, getting that contract negotiated and getting them to the closing table. The rest of the stuff can be handled by people that are really good in those areas. So you yeah. can stay focused on what you're really good at. You know, and it seems silly um, because it's basic. However, right, the main real estate commission requires us to present form three, mm -hmm. the real estate brokerage relationship form that explains the difference between a customer and a client. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things on the client side is that we're to perform to the written agreement with skill and care mm -hmm. and act as a fiduciary. So to look out for the best interests of the client, to get them the best terms, price terms and conditions, and then to maintain confidentiality. So I look at that and say, right, the written agreement was skill and care. So we're always looking to do what's right for others. Yep improve our skills with care and make sure that that experience is smooth. They're happy. And as a result, refer us business and keep us in mind the next time they have a real estate need or question. I mean, it can even be that they yeah. need a childcare. It doesn't have to be that they <laughs> have to sell their house. Um, and, um, you know, that's what, that's, what's enjoyable. That's all. That's what our team strives for is that they really take pride in helping people, find their home, buy their home, you know, even on the operation side, you know, Kim, Amanda, Danny, et cetera. Uh, they have a joy in seeing someone close on their home. Yes. Whether that's be that purchase that happens and then they see how, the delight on their face and even a seller that maybe is in a situation that they need to sell for whatever reason, when we solve that problem, you know, they have a problem where the, the solution, the operation or sorry, the options mm -hmm. provider, like you said, we advise and the client decides it's really to set the table and then they decide what to eat. Exactly. Exactly. And we move, and we move from there and make sure that they're really happy. So they tell everybody about it. Yeah. And I like that the U S news and world report article actually mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, one of our, one of the biggest reasons we were ranked number one was because we provide the resources to make this process easy. Yeah. Yeah. So back to your idea of the brokerage relationships form, you know, we need to provide care mm -hmm. to that relationship. But we also supplement that by surrounding ourselves with vendors and third parties that do the same thing that, that have values aligned with ours that provide customer service in the same way. So that when you come work with us and you're not sure who to use for a lender or an insurance company or an inspector, we can say, okay, Here's the people that we work with every day that we know will do a great job similar mm -hmm. to what we do. We highly recommend you you contact these people. So rather than having to go Google and sort through well, who's got more reviews and this, that, and the other thing, we can actually sure. tell you the people that we've had experiences with we yep. know will yep. get you to the finish line versus you just blindly finding somebody with no idea who they are. And yeah. that's a big part of the process. That, you know, Real estate's a team sport. We say it all the time. We work with a lot of vendors. We work with a lot of different parties. And the more of them that we can put together that work the same way, the easier that process is, the better the experience is, and the more often the client actually has a successful outcome. Yeah. And it's funny that you, the way you describe that, I, I could have done a better job from day one explaining my philosophy. I joined BNI originally, and that, that what got my real estate career off, off and running. I joined a networking group, right? Where each in each meeting was a um, key person from each industry, each walk of life. Sure. It wasn't always, you know, it started with real estate, mortgage and insurance, but then it yep. built out to, you know, multi-level marketing to people that were in fitness, you know, services and different health and beauty and, and whatnot. Right. All kinds of stuff. But at the, at the end of the day, what, by having that experience and leaving the corporate world to come there, I thought, right, if I'm to do the best job for a client, 
it's also to make sure that they're intertwined into all the other facets mm -hmm. so that they have a great experience with chiropractor and massage therapist and insurance agent. And so I was the go-to. So when people then asked like, well, who's, who, who do I go to for this? I, right. Oh, you got to go see my chiropractor, Caitlin. Yep. Um, and then Caitlin would speak very highly of me or right insurance provider or, and it just went from there. But then people were calling me to ask about various things that had nothing to do with real estate. I'm sure it like dovetailed and it came back around, I'm sure. but the whole idea was that, that our spider web, our circle of influence had so many connections that then I was actually starting to know like, geez, I know so many of these different people in all these industries and I need to help support all of them. Right. Um, and so then business grew that I was like sending business to here and receiving business here and just kept giving and giving and giving. And so even if people didn't need to buy or sell or invest in real estate today, I knew they would come back because I got them, you know, the person that plowed their driveway or even maybe hot topped their driveway or installed their pool or their fence and painted their house. I mean, there's so many um, areas that we went with that. And so that we continue to do that is just right. It got tougher and tougher with helping tell that story that, you know, that person knows it and maybe like a friend or a family member. We just didn't do that in some of our marketing and our advertising. Right. We did it kind of face to face. Yeah. Um, but that, but that speaks to, right. People should go to Jeff and they can confidentially look into like what their house is worth. Well, maybe they don't have a real estate need. They can just pick up the phone or message us and just ask for, well, who's the guy or gal for this and then leave it at that. There's no obligation to buy or sell a home. Nope. If you ask me for who's going to resurface or seal your driveway or yeah, no. Uh, build a deck on your home. Love that. Um, it's just that, right. We know, and we have these relationships that when people do that type of work for our clients, then those folks are then mentioning us as like an option. And, uh, we like to know that if we do enough of that, maybe some of that will come back. We don't expect it. It just naturally happens uh, from time to time. And, yep. uh, that's when we know we did a good job. Yeah. And when you go to jeffsellsmain.com, you'll see our partner section, which highlights some of our, some of our bigger partners. They're, they're more kind of real estate transaction related. The, yeah. people we like to work with to help somebody that maybe is in that process. We also have the Matea Perk section of that website where you can get discounts from all kinds of local and national mm -hmm. vendors uh, with relationships we've built. But we're, you know, we're big community people. We love to be that super connector. And we tell everybody we work yeah. with, you know, if you need anything, you need a recommendation for somebody to mow your lawn, plow your driveway, you know, paint your house, please call us. Like you don't have to just call us when you want to buy or sell. Please call us when you need anything because yeah. we likely have a list of vendors that we've used ourselves in many cases personally we can vouch for that we'll, that we'll be able to do the job you need at a rate you can afford with sure. quality that we'd expect. Yeah. And so we know, yeah, we know um, we've got a couple of things in the works right now. We won't announce them right now um, as we wrap up the show, but we'll have another website coming out soon um, that we've rekindled an old, uh, an old flame that's going to uh, come out. Um, we're just waiting for um, a feed, uh, you know, some more programming to go happen there. Um, but you're going to see a lot of push um, towards some, you know, we just love our local businesses love and it. the folks that, have supported us. We're supporting them. Um, and then just bringing more, we just love the area. We absolutely, all this community. We did that when we were on GIN, we brought in community leaders that were doing just such great things that we want to continue to showcase that. So we'll see more of that. We'll talk about that and announce that on a future show. Um, but most importantly, we want to thank everybody that's been watching the main real estate show. Tune in again and, uh, you know, give us some ideas of what you'd like to hear on, on the air and we'll uh, make sure that it gets discussed. Yeah. So thanks again for watching the main real estate show. Yeah. See y'all soon.